Hey team, welcome to Monday Morning Pearls. Before we get into the pearl, I want to point you towards our podcast. You can find it at spanthechasm.com forward slash podcast. Podcast series built by conversations with expert senior sales leaders, key success habits, things teams are doing well, areas where they've made mistakes that we can all learn from. The whole point of this is to help you sell better today. Now on to the pearl. Hey team, Monday Morning Pearls, continuing our talk on recession-proofing your sales teams. And the topics we've covered so far have been broad either for a sales rep or for sales leaders. Today is especially for sales leaders. I want you to tie in here because, um, you know, what do we see happening out there? Sometimes deals are falling off a pipeline, confidence is shaky, or people are a little wonky. So, Ken, why are we talking about this topic today? Well, I think when you start talking about the recession itself, if say there's a recession that comes, or, you know, I owned a business in the recession, Randy. So this is near and dear to my heart, right? Where all of a sudden we're selling deals and everything's fantastic. And then the just absolute bottom drops out. There were some indicators early that that was going to happen. The deal sizes started to shrink, even though the number of deals increased. So there were some things. But certainly one of the things that we know, and all the research says it, is if we go into a recession, smaller firms, say under a couple hundred, couple hundred to 500 employees, take the brunt of the hit. And guess what, sales leaders, you may not want the responsibility, you don't have a choice. Whether or not your, your company is able to flourish in that environment is on you. And so there's a few things you can start doing today, which will help set you up for success should we move into a recession. Absolutely. I think one of the things we, we need to do as, as sales leaders during this time, because our teams are going to, they're going to be in emotional stress because we're all feeling it. They're going to be working a little bit harder. We talked about precision and rigor and discipline, all that stuff. One of the things that we need to do, and some people will call this micromanagement, I want to say stop. This is not micromanagement. It's actually showing that you care deeply for your people. We need to inspect the key behaviors. Not all the behaviors, but the ones focus on what matters. What are the key things that your peeps need to be doing during this time and inspect those things? We want to inspect and inspect and inspect to find out where they're doing well you know, and where they're not. And what are we going to do with that information then? Right. Well, we've got to inspect it. And even before we jump to that, like, let me show you an example because we get pushback all the time. There are a lot of companies, you know, we still have this kind of, you know, 2000 ish internet culture thing going on where everybody's like, oh, everybody just comes to work and we just like each other a lot. Okay. That's great. And so they go, I don't want to micromanage Randy. So I don't want to walk by that. So let me give you a, a, something that looks different from micromanagement, but does hold them accountable. When people say, Hey, manage, we say manage your people. They're like, I don't want to manage phone calls number of emails, you know, I don't want to watch how many times they go to the bathroom or they take a coffee break. Awesome. Neither do I. But I will tell you, let's say the pipeline generation is something that's important. I don't care how they get X number of meetings a week or bi-weekly or monthly. I just care that they do. And then we'll measure through the pipeline whether or not they're effective. So I can say, go do what you want, Randy. But this is the one key thing that we're going to be able to measure you on. And here's what you miss. All the HR rules out there, all the HR stuff, which I'm not an HR guy, as is obvious by the way I talk, but all the HR stuff out there says people who have lanes and understand the lanes that they're supposed to play and how their performance will be judged are generally happier at work. And so I think that's kind of leads me into the second thing. I think if you were going to say, if we say one of the things they have to do is develop their current team, how would they go about developing their current team? Well, so there, there's two, two ways I want to look at this. Number one, there's a systemic issue. If there's like a systemic issue across the whole organization, then that's what I'm going to say we, we want to bring in some training, right. team, team-wide training, maybe process training. Um, but on an individual level, you're, you have a gap in maybe front-end discovery. I've got a gap in validation and demo. We want to work with us individually on that, to hyper-focus on those skills, to bring up those skills that are going to improve our math as we move across. So I think what I want to make sure I'm doing, as I'm inspecting these key issues, these key attributes, I'm seeing, do I have a system-wide problem? Great, let's fix that. Right. Or do I have a rep-by-rep-by-rep rep rep issue? This one needs help on this one, this one needs help on this one. Because if we train everybody on the things that only a couple people need, you're wasting a lot of time and resources and people are out the window. So we want to take that inspection process to really inform specific, and I don't want to use the word specific, hyper-focused training and development programs here because we want to make sure that we are surgically affecting the things that need to be fixed. Yep, and here's where the onus is on you as a leader. You've got to put time into yourself to learn how to be an effective coach. Because here's the deal. You may say, oh, I coach. Oh, I do this. But if your team doesn't think you're a great coach, you're not. 
Just like if the prospect doesn't resonate with your message, then your message is not a good message, right? So we have to own some things here. And so one of the things I would say as you're developing your current team, you need to invest in yourself so that you understand how to most effectively communicate because in spite of all the technology, it's still a human to human deal. So we've talked kind of about how we would man like aspects of managing, aspects of coaching your team. What do you think about like leadership from a sales perspective if we go into a recession? We talked about a little human to human here, right? Um, a little, little, little inspiration, right? You know, I think we get, especially in today, having seen a lot of things come through in the last 30 plus years of uh, professional sales, there's a lot of using the systems. There's where you look at the KPIs. We're looking at Inside Square. We're looking at Salesforce. We're looking inside of all these things. We're getting the, the systems. We're doing some good development, which is great. But I think we sometimes forget about the emotions, the people themselves. And this is a great time to inspire your teams. Hope, help them to be able to see where their activities are going to help them achieve their personal goals. And those are highly aligned and encourage them along the way. This time with a little bit of uncertainty is when you can kind of like you get the land grab on the market side, this is a loyalty grab that you can get on the personnel side that will always be appreciated when you come through this time. Yep. And here's, so here's the question that you have to ask yourself as a sales leader. Do you understand Timmy and Jana's personal goals and how the position they're in and your company is capable of helping them achieve those goals? If you can't answer that question for all the people you manage, then we've got some work to do. The good news is you can do it, but you got some work to do because we got to figure that out because that's truly how we connect with our team and inspire them and get that loyalty out of them. So once we've done these things, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that's going to feel fantastic. Don't you think, Randy? Well, I mean, how would you feel, right? You, you, you got your team, they're, they're paying attention to the right stuff right? We're investing in their skill sets, lifting everybody up. Everyone's coming up a little bit and they're fired up, ready to go. I mean, how would that feel in a time, you know, when things are a little bit tough, you had this like little tight band of warriors going out the, yeah. out the market together, got each other's backs. We're all in this together because we built that human to human piece. I got to think that would feel great. Yeah. I got to think it'd feel fantastic because in most recessionary periods, right? Everybody's just talking about how they're going to lose their job. You got this band of people going, I don't feel that. My sales leader's inspiring us. We've been in development. We, we're in there. We, we know exactly the behaviors we have to perform on a daily basis to go to war and win. So um, I think it would feel just absolutely fantastic. Love it, man. And if you guys want to have a conversation around that, uh, we care deeply about this stuff and want to help you and your organization if it makes sense. Please reach out to us. You have all our channels here. We'd love to have a conversation just to see what's going on there and see if we can or cannot help you out during this as we prepare for this time that was going to come in three months or it's going to come in three years, but we know it's coming at some point. Yep.